So, my talk is about me podcasting while black for the past year and some change. Um, uh, I, I did kind of name it in something that was a little bit uh, hyperbolic and said, save my sanity. It kind of did. It kind of set me up to be able to talk about things like this and other people to kind of set them up to be able to talk about what they do and how they fit the space in gaming. I run a gaming podcast. We'll talk about that in a bit. That's me. That's my face. It's really big on the screen. That's bugged out. Uh, <laughs> there's some sliders on the bottom. Curling is dope. It's 100% curling. If you like curling, you should get up with me and say what's up because we should talk about curling. Also, I can halfway swim. That means I can almost not die <laughs> if I get into water. Uh, that's kind of cool. Um, so I'm trying to figure that out uh, in that space. This is me now. This is like a year ago at my job at a, at a retreat. I'm 36. Hi. Um, this is me introducing myself in a slide. That was me when I was about seven or eight, nine. I look salty as shit in that picture. <laughs> it was, I, <laughs> the funny thing about that picture was it was super hot and I had a big face watch before everybody else had a big face watch. <laughs> so I was doing it big way back in the day and I had a fro and it was super hot. I don't know why I was mad. Anyway, <laughs> the beauty of that picture is, um, to a certain extent, I shouldn't be here. Um, my, the next slide you'll see in a second, um, is, actually, let me do it. That's my grandma, and that's a naked cup. Um, the thing that makes this kind of important is that woman right there saved my life. I was a child of, I am a child, <laughs> I'm a child of two drug addicted parents. Uh, drug addicted parents. Uh, my mother and father were both on drugs. Uh, my grandma saved my life by taking me in, and she could have put me up for adoption. She could have saved me and put me somewhere else, but she took me in. She said, "You're my child. I will take you and raise me," even though I was a salty bastard in that other picture. A couple of things that she gave me. Uh, this cup has some significance. You may not be able to see it because it's a little bit dark. Uh, but it says black is beautiful on that cup. Uh, a couple things she kind of gave me, um, she gave me some self-awareness about my blackness. She told me that I was beautiful all the time. She told me she loved me. Um, she told me that black people, although we did not have a great space in the, in the world, in the planet, that we were both to be talked about and exalted in some ways and kind of given, given a space that was equal to other people because we are all human beings in, in the end. Um, the other thing she gave me was uh, not the train, that was the other slide. Uh, this slide is coming after that because I was raised in the Bronx, so I had to put a New York picture in there because that's what's up. Um, during, the, during, the, during the 70s and 80s, uh, raised me during a very, very, very hard time. The city was not fun, it was not great. Um, but they did have Mickey Mouse graffiti, which was pretty, pretty badass. Um, so besides giving me that kind of self-awareness, she also gave me video games. Um, she was the person who introduced me to gaming. She was the person who bought me my first console. She's the person who was the first person to say, you will be able to do this and be smart and play games. And also, besides the fact that she bought me all these things, and she, well, she didn't buy me all these, she bought me, because <laughs> we were balling, we were on the train. Um, besides the fact that she bought me uh, consoles and video games, she did it for multiple reasons. One, it was, a, it was a gateway into computers and tech. Two, it was to keep me safe from being outside in the 70s and 80s in the Bronx, which was not that fun. Uh, I'm sure you have seen the Warriors movie multiple times. Uh, yeah, thank you, Warriors. Um, so again, it was one of those things where uh, she saved me from lots of things that would have kind of ruined most people uh, being in those places, and I have lots of friends who didn't make it. I have lots of people in my life who didn't make it out of the Bronx during that era. Um, drugs were not the move, but it was everywhere and always around at all times. Um, so fast forward a little bit to me being an adult, um, and this was me uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, not actually me. That is a proxy me. <laughs> that is un. And I don't even know, that's some, some black guy. Um, 
But this was me at my old job. So I used to work at a multi, uh, municipal union doing IT stuff for them. Um, and it was not amazing uh, because they didn't want to give us things like Chrome or Wi-Fi or <laughs> things that make tech actually work when you are not in the Stone Age, like things like that. So I had to try to figure out another way to kind of fulfill the things that I wasn't getting out of my job, so I started a gaming website. So I started a site called thesmallpointblog.com. We won some awards uh, back in 2013 or something like that. Uh, and it was great. I got to write. I'm not a writer by trade, uh, but I got to do that for a little bit. I got to kind of um, build a community around that. Um, and I wanted to give writers of color and marginalized folks a space that they could write and a place that they could talk about the things that they do and about the games they love and the games they want to want to make. Um, that happened for a bit, but as we see, most times people don't read what you write on the internet unless it's in bullet points, and that sucks, <laughs> and that's not fun. So we decided, actually, about two weeks ago to shut down the small point block, so rest in peace, small point block. Um, but to coincide with that, we decided that we would do a podcast. My friend and, and partner out in Chicago who we have not met. We've been doing a podcast for a year and a half. We have never met. Um, we decided to do Spawn on Me podcast. So we said, what is that going to be? That's, that's Cicero. He likes highlight, and he's really, really into bourbon. Um, so we decided to make a podcast. The podcast, we said, what are you going to do? Because everybody and their mama has a podcast at this point. Um, and we said, well, that old picture of me being salty as shit I want to give that kid the ability to know that he'll have uh, uh, an awareness that other people who look like him are able to make games. There have got to be people in the space that are doing games, who are making games, who are talking about games, who are the folks who are the developer, the person who is programming, the person who is the artist. You've got to know that those folks are out there in the world. And how can we give them uh, a platform? Um, I remember there being a discussion and some statistics that came out probably around 2012 or so uh, that talked about the lack of diversity in the space. We all know that there's a lack of diversity in tech, but there's a really big lack of diversity in the game space. We know that this is true. We've seen it, we've heard it, we've heard all the conversations. There's a couple of stats that stuck out to me, and these are a little bit old, but um, this is from 2002, the Kaiser Family Foundation study. Um, but kids from age to eight, uh, eight to 18, uh, African-Americans and Hispanic youth uh, play more games than white youth. Um, and then low and middle income communities spend even more time doing so. Um, that plus, if you were to take all the characters that we had in games and you kind of put them in a bag and say, well, what do they look like? Uh, about half of those human characters were white, 56%. Uh, a fifth of those were African-American, 22. And if you grouped up everyone else, they would make up less than 10%. These are probably a little bit old. If you probably look at them now, the stats may be a little bit different, but they're similar. Um, again, what do you do about that? Right? You try to figure out what the space looks like, and you try to figure out how you can make that better. Um, this is a blank slide, because I messed that up. Um, <laughs> there are a couple of reasons, again, why our podcast exists. Um, here is a statement that is one that every time I see it, it makes you want to kick things. It is that. Don't put politics in our games. And the reason why I added that little animation to it, because you need magical fucking thinking to make that actually true. <laughs> That's a lie. That is stupid. That's dumb. Don't say that. Uh, and to those people, I have a nice little... <laughs> Nice little gift. Because uh, that's silly. It makes no sense. It's no, they where? Politics not in what? Where? Anywho. So that's one of the parts of this. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm sorry. So that's one of the reasons why we have our show. Uh, we, we want people to kind of understand that. But there's other parts to it, right? You know, I'm a black male. The year has not been great. 2014, 2015 has not been dope. If you were to ask most 
black people how their year has been. It's kind of looked like that. <coughs> Literally. <laughs> I've been scared for my life on multiple occasions and not just because I am doing anything that I'm not supposed to be doing. Uh, it's just being me, right? Um, we had a, a bunch of things that have happened. Um, we've had so many people who have lost their lives to police brutality. Uh, that has been a thing that has been evident and discussed and talked about on numerous occasions. Um, we've also had those folks who, if you're not aware of Gamergate, there's a lot of discussion that hap has happened in, in that space for a long time. Um, they are terrible people, don't like them, they're not good people. Um, so what we decided to do was we decided that we would have our own show kind of do something in the space that nobody else has done. Our show is already niche, no one is doing what we're doing, uh, but we decided that we could run a gaming event. We want to do some social good with gaming, so we made Spawn for Good. Spawn for Good was a, and is, a platform for using gaming for social good. Uh, we ran our first event in January, which was a Black Lives Matters uh, tournament, not tournament, it was a gaming, a streaming weekend, um, where we were gonna take some of that money and share that between two funds. One was gonna be for Erica Garner, uh, Eric Garner's uh, daughter, uh, who tragically lost his life on a sidewalk because he was supposedly selling cigarettes. Um, and also to the, uh, New York Law, good God, I forgot. Um, uh, a, lawyer's, a lawyer's league out in New York that basically bailed out people when they got put into jail. Uh, so if you're protesting, you got put into jail, they would bail you out. Um, so what you do is you gather up all your friends. These are some of my friends. We got them all together and say, everybody, come on. We're going to hang out for a weekend. We're going to stream. We're going to see if we can raise $5,000 for these folks and see what we can do. And one of the most amazing things that came out of that was this. Hopefully it'll run. This is Sharif Jackson, who I love, who did the best dance on the planet <laughs> after getting a score in Blades of Steel. That made me so, so excited. Um, I wish you could have heard the audio, it would have been dope. Um, so what happened was we did all that for a weekend, we got everybody together, and we raised that. Cool. We split that in half, sent those to the two funds, and everybody was happy, um, but really quick, I want to go to what that means in the grand scheme. So um, what it means to kind of find your voice in the space, doing a podcast, doing one that's super niche, and it really is not one that people want to hear if you are not in that group, right? We're talking about lots of things that are, uh, that are things that most folks who aren't people of color don't necessarily want to have ingest. They don't want to ingest that kind of information. Uh, the beauty of it is we've had folks on our show who are both people of color and not, and we've been able to have discussions with them about uh, things that they might not even necessarily want to talk about themselves, but since we're all in this together, we all have similar issues. Uh, these are some of the folks that we've had. I'm so happy to say that we have a very diverse uh, bunch of folks that we've had on our show. Uh, some folks I have looked up to for decades, Adam Sessler, that guy, I love him. Great dude, Evan Narciss, uh, Tariq Musa, uh, Lee Alexander, some folks up there. Um, the beauty of that, and the reason why I show this is not to brag, it's not one of those kinds of things, but it's to talk about, really quickly, some of the conversations that we've had with these folks that they might not have had before. Lee Alexander, who's on the upper right, um, we had a conversation with her, she runs Off World. If you're not familiar, you should definitely check it out. Um, she we had a conversation with her about being biracial. She's never had that conversation ever before. Not in a public space, not, not, the, without, not that we were aware of. Um, this guy right here, Tremel Isaac, he is a person who, if you ever played Fallout, he is the person who has made the Fallout boy. He designed that, that character. Most people don't know that. You should know that. People of color, little kids of color, should know that, because then they'll understand that they can do that. Um, and there are also some other conversations in here that were great. Adam Sessler, we had an amazing conversation about X Clan music, which was dope, which is an old 90s rap group that no one would have thought he would know. Um, so, uh, in essence, what I want everyone here to do is, you fill in that blank. If you want to do that in whatever space you can, whether it be podcasting, whether it be online in your blog, whether it be um, uh, whether you program, whether you game, whether you make games, you should be able to fill in that blank with whatever your agenda is. It's not bad to have an agenda. You should have an agenda. The space needs you to have an agenda. You should be able to say that agenda and say it in those ways. 
so that when people understand and ask you, you can tell them exactly why. You do what you do, why you love what you love, and be able to talk about those in real ways. Uh, we do that on our show. We hopefully will uh, continue to do that. Uh, it's important. And uh, thank you guys so much. Checking me out and all that stuff right there.